Hello everybody and welcome to Q Sports. I'm Anthony Evangelista alongside High Point University men's basketball coach Alan Huss. Coach, how are you today? Doing well, how are you? Doing all right. Can't complain, it's a beautiful Thursday afternoon. Uh, first off, I just wanted to ask, what initially drew you into coaching? You've been around basketball your entire life. What was that one thing or one sort of event that brought you towards coaching? You know, for me, it was uh, an opportunity to get back involved with the basketball with, with a game I love. Uh, at the end of my playing career, I dealt with a, a number of injuries, uh, and I, I thought maybe I'd lost my love for, for the game of basketball, but I think what I'd really found was a hate for injuries and, and the process of rehabilitating those injuries. So uh, I kind of had an, you know, a, a, an exit from basketball that I thought maybe where, where maybe I thought my time was up, but as I got back involved and started working on the side, training kids, working with kids, I, I realized quickly that I, that I still had a, a love and a desire to teach the game. Awesome. Now, kind of going into this year, now that year one for High Point is coming to a close, what initially drew you to that position here at High Point University? Yeah, institutional alignment is, uh, in, in, in probably in a nutshell. I mean, obviously there's a lot of nice things here, but the people uh, from Dr. Cobain's office down through Dan Hauser, our director of athletics here, uh, and really everyone within the university, everybody knows what we stand for. Uh, and I like being a part of something that's bigger than, than me. I think that's what draws me to team sports is that team feeling. And I think we have that in a, in a serious way here at High Point. Awesome. So how has your time at Creighton, both as a coach and a player, influenced the way that you run things here at High Point? I do my best to replicate almost all things we did at Creighton. Uh, you know, it's difficult to do in one season, uh, but we've, we've got three guys in addition to me that all spent time at Creighton on the staff. Uh, and I think because of that, there's, there are heavy influences from Creighton to, to here uh, that you can kind of see in almost every facet, every aspect of what we do here. Uh, probably most notably our, our style of play, uh, the offensive focus and what we do, really trying to get up and down the floor, score the basketball. Uh, we didn't shoot it quite as well as, as Creighton did uh, this, this season, but we aim to change that this offseason. Now, how much does data analytics play into the success of your season this past year? I mean, I think there are, uh, there are a number of factors in which we make every decision that we focus on, but uh, analytics are near at the top of every factor in every decision we make, whether it's decisions on personnel, whether it's decisions on style of play, whether it's decisions on uh, you know, defensive schemes or offensive schemes. Analytics you know, are, are something that are considered with every decision, and not just one or two things, but a whole series of things. And now that we're uh, diving into the spring recruiting season, the transfer portaling, uh, as, as now I've heard it called, now that we're portaling, which is apparently a verb, uh, you know, it's, we, we, we sit and stare at a screen full of numbers at all times before we get into the more personal things, figuring out student athletes' character, their family, uh, all the things that make them tick. We want to make sure that the numbers add up. And after that, we start trying to figure out the why. Would you consider this season a success and why? A partial success. Um, yeah, I think if you'd have told everyone on our team when we were picked seventh that we were going to win the, win the conference outright, uh, I think everyone would have been happy. Uh, that being said, you know, the ultimate goal when you're in mid-major college basketball is to play in the NCAA tournament. And uh, having to watch that this week without us being a participant is difficult because we felt like we had the pieces. and. Despite being the youngest team in the league, we felt like we we had all the pieces and all the all the right things in place, and we just we came up a possession or two short, and that's obviously disappointing. Absolutely. So I wanted to, on a happier note, congratulate you, Coach, on the honor of winning Big South Coach of the Year, as well as today learning that you've become a finalist for two National Coach of the Year awards. What do those honors mean to you? It means we have good players. <laughs> You know, I, I went through a season, my, my second season as a head high school coach, uh, I was two and 19 that season at Culver Military Academy in Indiana. Uh, you know, and, and the next season we broke the school record for wins and I wasn't any different coach. It's, it's ultimately the players that win games, the buy-in, a uh, combination of, of talent and, and, and them buying into something bigger than themselves. And I think we had both those components this season and obviously as we move this thing forward and continue to progress towards that ultimate goal of playing in the NCAA tournament and winning games in the NCAA tournament, we know that we've got to have those two things in abundance. Absolutely. 
So coach, who would you say is the biggest influence in your life? Biggest influence in my life? Uh, probably my wife. Uh, you know, I'm with her the most and she tells me what to do. So uh, following, followed closely by my two daughters. I'm, my entire life is run by women that tell me everything I do wrong. Uh, you know, outside of that, my, my parents uh, were, were a huge piece and, uh, you know, putting me in a position to be successful, helping me to fail at times and learn from my mistakes. And, uh, you know, as I watch kids and students today, parents so many times pick them up and not allowing them to fail, I'm, I'm thankful for my parents allowing me to fail a few times so I could figure out my ultimate calling and uh, figure out how to win. It's a key piece. What does being a High Point Panther mean to you? I think we, I, I talked about it earlier, but it means being a part of something bigger than me. I think that's why you're here. I think that's why we're all here. I think we like the mission of this place. You're drawn in by a really cool campus and really, uh, you know, that, that looks like a, a resort or a country club or whatever you want to call it. But you're captured by the people, the opportunities, and, and just being about something bigger than each one of us. And I like that. Uh, I can I can tell you that as the world gets a little crazier every single day and we all look around and see it, being a part of something where the main thing is the main thing and we keep things just basic, simple, uh, about getting you guys great jobs and opportunities in life and having you prepared to go be productive citizens, like just being a part of that I think is phenomenal. Uh, and I don't think you can say that at every university. Absolutely. What are your expectations for your Panther squad next year or your goals? To, to finish the job. Uh, just to put it nicely, we, we, were, we were so close this year, but we plan to come back. Uh, we'll start working here the 1st of June again after they get a little bit of time away, and we'll, we'll come back the 1st of June and we'll, we'll start building towards uh, winning both the conference and a, and a postseason championship. Awesome. Well, that's all the questions I have for today. Thank you, Coach Huss, for coming out. Awesome. This has been Anthony Evangelista on Q Sports. See you next time.